trucks are blocking the roads. But um, I was able to just get there. Now I'm trying to get out and get back home. <laughs> is back from media blast i already primed it i got a good look at it it's okay i think i can live with it i wish it was in better condition but i think it's workable it did blow through right here along this edge that's the only spot that blew through at media blast the bottom is still pitted but it didn't blow through as badly as i kind of thought it would if there was a perfect one nearby i would try to pick it up even though i drove 16 hours to get this one there isn't a good one close by so this is what we're gonna use today i want to start separating this i'm pretty much gonna do it the same way i'm gonna drill out all of these spot welds and then separate at the drip rail except this time we'll grab the angle grinder sand down this edge peel up the lip and then we'll drill out all those spot welds and then we'll lift this guy up and start fitting it to the car smokes cool so i got the outer lip removed i don't know if you guys could tell from the video but basically what i did stay so basically what i did is i just took the angle grinder with a coarse sanding disc on it and i ground through this edge and once i ground down about like a 16th of an inch so that i could just pop this guy off came off in one giant piece so the edge is off. Now all I need to do, I need to drill out all the spot welds. Since I only need the skin, I don't need any of the outer portion. What I can do is I can drill out the spot welds from the outside. And then, in theory, I should be able to remove the entire roof skin without disturbing it. It's a basic panel replacement thing. You sacrifice one panel to save another. So the replacement panel, I'm sacrificing all the surrounding metal in order to save this. And then with the car, I sacrificed the skin in order to save all this outside metal. I just gotta drill out these freaking spot welds and then I can try to pop this thing off. Man, I'm so stoked to get this apart and get it on the car. I tore up my hand trying to separate these lens protectors and I freaking couldn't get them separated. Uh, it's actually a pretty minor injury. It's really not as bad as I thought it might be. Oh, I think we're good. Yes. That 
felt like a win today. It felt really good to have like a small win in my life. And really actually this is a pretty big moment for the build and for me. I was worried that when I pulled it apart that it was going to look really bad underneath the bracing, but it actually looks better than I thought it might look. I already knew that that one edge was totally blown out, and thankfully I have the perfect patch material from removing the roof from the car. Tomorrow I'm going to come back, clean up the rust, throw some primer on it, and start working on the patch, and we can also start doing some test fits. It's not perfect, but it's definitely workable. Ta-da! Man, it is so crazy to walk into my garage and see the solid roof on the car. Feels so good to have it up there. Last night, I needed to store it somewhere. So I said, oh, what the heck, let's just put it on top of the car. It just slipped right into place. I need to trim the A-pillars. I left them long knowing that I would want to trim them to fit. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna mark where we need to cut the A-pillars. We're gonna trim those down. We're gonna fit the roof again, and then after that, we're gonna work on the patch. Let's get to work. <laughs> really really close if it needs to be trimmed anymore it's like only a hair the roof needs to be pushed back maybe a quarter to an eighth of an inch so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove the roof again and just clean up the drip rail and clean up the underside edge of the roof and that'll just help push it back a little bit and if there's any spot weld left or any sort of crust or junk it should help get it into place Look at this. I fully just broke another drill. <laughs> I knew these were cheap drills. I didn't expect it to last very long. I burnt another one of these out, but look, I think it was so hot. It like fully melted wherever that motor mounts and it's bent upwards. It's totally messed up. What are you gonna do? It still works technically, so hopefully this lasts me just a little bit longer. <laughs> So the drip rail is primed, the roof is primed, everything's all cleaned up. I think it's time to put the roof on the car and see if we can do a really good test fit. Let's get it. still really close but it's not quite there it seems like it needs to come back probably like an eighth of an inch but these little drip rail divots look like they're way off I'm wondering if it's possible that they did the divots in the drip rail by hand not by a jig and therefore they could be in a slightly different spot on different roofs I'm not really sure I think I'm gonna actually 
flatten out the divot on the skin and then just shape that to fit the lip that I already have on the car, if that makes sense. This little thing is really kind of throwing me for a loop. So is the problems that like I don't expect to have. I expected so many other things to possibly go wrong, but uh, for some reason this thing is just not lining up right there. That's all we need to do. I think we do that on the other side and it'll sit evenly. Feels better on this side already. The roof fits well now. I think that was the key to making it fit, was just readjusting those little dips in the drip rail. It feels like it's flush all the way around. Before, it seemed like the rear was just sitting up a little bit and forward a hair. Now it feels perfect. We just need to make a new dip in the drip rail to align with the one that's on the car. It should be all we need to do. I almost forgot, we still need to do a massive patch on the roof. <laughs> working on the square back. Today I want to rough cut this patch to size, then we're going to lay down some die chem and start hammering out that dent that's along the edge. Once we get the dent fixed, then we need to weld up a couple spots where we used to have spot welds, because those had to be ground out to remove that patch panel. Once we do that, we can also fix the drip rail divots, and then we can attach the roof for real. Um, we're so close to being able to attach the roof. So, another change of plan. The patch piece is really long and really narrow and it warped after cutting it. So, I looked at it and I think what I'm gonna do, I needed to fix these little spots anyways. Instead of just fixing those, I'm gonna chop the patch into three different pieces and then grab a little extra metal from the leftover scrap and we'll weld it in like four pieces. I think doing it in four separate pieces is going to be way easier than trying to make this work by bending it into shape. I just don't see myself being able to do that easily. We're going to chop out the bad stuff and then we'll make it fit. I think that should be the way to make it fit here. As you can see, the plan keeps on changing as things come up. I have the patches in place. I have my uh, really, really high tech clamps here. I guess this is like part of the fun and then one of the things I hate about working in a, like a home garage. I often don't have the right tool for the job, so 
I get to be creative and work with what I have. And today that was <laughs> a couple of rocks and these regular clamps. I should have had, not should have, I wish I had a few of these. This would have been great, but I only have one of them. So I think I'm going to use this for holding the patch pieces in place. And then my ghetto rigged rocks and clamps will uh, work for the roof. I'm also drinking a really disgusting looking cup of Monte. It tastes okay, but the strainer I used apparently wasn't good enough, so I got a bunch of Monte flakes in there. It's welded up. I'm pretty happy with it. It looks decent. Once I grind it down, I'll really be able to tell how it looks. It's the next day. I'm all geared up to make some cuts. Everything looks really good except for one small area kind of got bulged out a little bit and I think it's because I had to do two smaller patches in that area and as a result the expansion and contraction during welding it ended up just getting kind of wonky. So what I'm going to do because I have plenty of patch material I'm just going to make one longer patch to replace the lower half of those two small patches. Hopefully real quickly I'm just going to cut this out and replace it with a better piece and it'll keep its shape and we'll have a nice straight drip rail. Let's get to it. Today's the day. I'm finishing up some prep. I'm gonna lay down some primer on some bare metal and start getting this thing tacked into place. It's looking pretty good. I just need to adjust a couple of things to get it looking great and then we can start welding it in. I'm super stoked. It's been a long time in the making. I just wanna get this attached and get on with it.
was a lot of work. <laughs> okay, so the roof is welded into place. I ground all the welds down flush and it looks pretty good. We need to bend the drip rail back over. And I did a lot of reading on this. I looked at some forums and they used to make a tool just for doing this, but the tool is like hard to find now and it's expensive and whatever. People recommend taking a pair of channel locks and grinding the teeth flush so that it doesn't put weird crimps into the drip rail. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna use these channel locks that I already had. I feel like we're so close to finishing up the roof and then we can move on to like the rest of the body work and making this thing look great. Anyways, let's make the drip rail tool. We're gonna grind down these channel locks and then we're gonna bend the drip rail back into place. over the drip rail is going pretty good but we have a slight problem the drip rail is splitting in half so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still fold it over to the best of my ability and then I'm gonna clamp it tight and then weld it and grind it flush I think if I welded it now I would never get it bent back over because welding makes the metal way too rigid there's no more pliability after welding it I'm just gonna continue bending it over weld it grind it flush and hopefully Fingers crossed, if all goes well, we'll have a good drip rail when we're done with this. is on it looks pretty good especially all things considered I was really worried when the drip rail started falling apart that was definitely a moment a big concern for me it turned out pretty good it was really hard to get it really flat with the angle grinder I wish I had a belt sander I felt like if I was woodworking I'd want some kind of plane type device it still hasn't sunk in yet I haven't even taken time to look at it it's getting late the Sun is setting I need to get the car inside and get this place cleaned up. I've been enjoying hearing about your guys' projects. I know a lot of you are working on squarebacks and it's been super cool talking to a bunch of people. So always feel free to drop a comment. I do my best to get back to you guys when I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can like and subscribe if you want to follow along with the builds and maybe get stoked to work on your own projects. As always, I believe in you. Get to wrenching. Peace.
things loud. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we're starting the shop build.